Hi guys, starting out as Oppo's sub-brand, Realme sure has come a long way. Growing exponentially, it's now offering smartphones from entry-level to new flagship and challenging the dominance of the likes of Xiaomi and Samsung. As per a counterpoint report Realme is the fastest growing 5G brand year on year amongst the 5 major smartphone OEMs in the country. Much of the success can be attributed to his signature number series which started out as a budget challenger but has, over the years, started to penetrate higher price brackets. Realme 9 Pro series is the company's latest endeavor in securing the top spot and a device that doesn't conform to the affordability mantra that has been a foundation for Realme's success. The Realme 9 Pro Plus is its highest priced smartphone to date as part of the number series and with its starting price of 24,999 rupees positioned squarely in the mid-range segment. The device has specs to flaunt too, with a flagship 50-megapixel Sony IMX766 sensor acting as the primary camera and MediaTek's Dimensity 925G heralding the processing capabilities. Does the Realme 9 Pro Plus pack in the oomph needed for survival in the pack mid-range market? Let's find out. If it is a supreme camera experience you are looking for in a mid-range smartphone, the Realme 9 Pro Plus should be your top choice. Combined with a stellar display and lasting battery life, the device surely merits a second look. However, the less than pleasing facade and persistent bloatware issue bogged down the experience somewhat. The Realme 9 Pro Plus S design does not appear very flashy. It's heavy in the hand and the edges are curved, providing a less than favorable grip. By all accounts, the 9 Pro Plus is unremarkable from the outside, but it has a simplistic appeal with matte finished rails and a reflective back. The Aurora Green variant I have received looks more like indigo blue and has something akin to glitter scattered across that shimmers under bright light. I feel that the Sunrise Blue version, which uses Realme's light shift design to change colors when placed under sunlight, could potentially be a head turner. Apart from that, Realme has made the device its thinnest smartphone of the number series with a thickness of just under 8mm. The 9 Pro Plus has a triple camera arrangement, not unlike the Realme 9i, with the housing sharply raised from the chassis. Realme is retaining the headphone jack for now, and that is present on the bottom alongside the USB-C slot and the speaker grille. The earpiece, thankfully, doubles as the second speaker while the power button is present on the right, and the volume rockers are on the left. It is safe to say that the Realme 9 Pro Plus would win a lot of style points, but that might not really be a bad thing from the perspective of those who don't prefer super flashy phones. On the display side of things, the phone sports a 6.4-inch Full HD Plus AMOLED panel with 90Hz refresh rate. It's a shame that Realme couldn't increase the refresh rate to 120Hz, but to the untrained eye, the difference between the two is minimal. The display on the Realme 9 Pro Plus provides an excellent viewing experience, with the panel being nicely color calibrated and bright, with several customization options to suit the needs of varied users. You get the usual toggles for eye comfort and dark mode apart from the O1 Ultra Vision engine which skillfully converts SDR content to HDR. The vivid, natural, and pro mode color options are present to add a touch of vibrancy and dynamic range to the visual quality. The brightness levels are very good with absolutely no problems in outdoor sunny conditions. HDR10 Plus and Widevine 1 Lear certifications are present to enhance OTT content, while the bezels surrounding the display are minuscule as is the punch hole on the top right. Realme's is its camera and image taking prowess. The company has promised a flagship experience in the optics department and has gone so far as to compare the photos taken by the Realme 9 Pro Plus to the likes of Samsung's Galaxy S21 Ultra, a device that costs nearly five times more. I had my doubts initially, after having seen the Oppo REN07 Pro's fully during nighttime shots, while using the same 50-megapixel IMX766 sensor. However, my testing has revealed that the 9 Pro Plus indeed is a photo-capturing powerhouse, no matter the lighting conditions. The large 1.56-inch sensor captures a ton of light, while the 2 1 m pixel size gives a lot of breathing room in terms of details. The focus speeds are super fast, and shutter lag is non-existent, which translates to clear shots without any shake. OIS has also been implemented on the main sensor which counters and corrects most of the unsteady hand movement while shooting. I found colors had a tad bit more saturated look than I prefer even with the company's AI scene enhancer turned off. However, the shots did look great and Instagram worthy, with vibrant color styles. HDR kicks in automatically and meters the dynamic range in an efficient manner, while diminishing shadows in the background. There are several modes for capturing photos such as street mode which allows you to set the focal length and adjust exposure values manually, or dual view video that can shoot with both the front and rear cameras simultaneously. There are Realme branded filters embedded within the camera app to remedy boring looking shots. The 50 megapixel mode is there for more details but at the expense of dynamic range. The 8 megapixel ultra wide shooter is nothing out of the ordinary though. In terms of details and focus, pics shot from it show a bit of over-sharpening, while adjusting for exposure. 
The macro shooter is usable but just barely, since it utilizes a 2 megapixel sensor, but it does bring in sharp colors when the lighting is appropriate. The portrait mode can put the subject in the foreground without a hitch, although the edge detection around something like hair on my head could still be improved. Nighttime photography on the device has me quite impressed, although there were a few caveats that I personally didn't like. There's a bit of oversaturation of colors that sometimes lend the images an artificial look. Highlights of the subject and the shadows are less pronounced while making the pictures more contrasty. However, calibration of the exposure and how well the exposure meter introduces light into the frame did leave me impressed. The details are razor sharp in assisted lighting, and the dedicated night mode helps in areas that are devoid of the latter. Realme also offers a Pro and AI toggle on the bottom left of the viewfinder when in night mode. With the Pro mode you are offered a series of manual controls for ISO, shutter speed, aperture, and white balance, while on AI the phone adjusts these settings automatically. I was also pleasantly surprised by how good the ultra-wide shooter held up its own in low light, something I've rarely seen on even flagship phones. Videos shot from the Realme 9 Pro Plus were none too shabby with a maximum resolution of 4K and 30fps. Thanks to OIS, there was better stability in the frames, and the focus shift was faster than I had expected. AI highlight can also be used in videos, but the resolution is capped at 1080p, and the colors are a little too bright for my taste. On the front, there is a 16 megapixel Sony IMX471 selfie camera that works just fine in good lighting, with a touch of overprocessing and fair skin tones. Overall, I am quite impressed with the optics on the Realme 9 Pro Plus and I feel that this is the beginning of a fruitful venture to further improve smartphone cameras in the mid-range category. Moving on to the performance aspect of the phone, MediaTek has supplied the Dimensity 925 GSOC for processing needs, and I, for one, think there could be some improvements in this regard. However, my words should not be misconstrued to believe that the 9 Pro Plus is inadequate while handling an average smartphone user's day-to-day -day needs. The device has a very decent score of 505,838 on Antutu, and a multi-core score of 2326 on Jeep Inch 5, both of which point to ample performance. Even so, with Realme's history of offering value for money hardware, I did expect at least a Dimensity 1200 to grace the 9 Pro Plus at this price point. The apparent benefit is visible while playing intensive games and trying to edit and export videos for social media content. Extreme frame rate 60fps is available on BGMI, but it can only be paired with the lowest graphics settings, while being bogged down by continuous frame drops after extended usage. However, there was no overheating to report, and the CPU maintained a fair bit of its maximum processing capabilities, even under sustained load. The dual speakers on the Realme 9 Pro Plus have Dolby Atmos support for a crisp, loud, and rich sound. The headphone jack on the bottom has high-res audio capability for users who have compatible wired earphones headphones. Realme has employed an optical fingerprint scanner for authentication purposes, and it works accurately for the most part, while facial recognition could do with a bit of fine-tuning. One of the more useful features that surprised me pleasantly was an integrated heart rate sensor with the optical scanner, and its results were quite accurate when compared to my smartwatch. The phone also supports 5G, but with no telecom structure to utilize it, for now, the feature remains useless. However, the regular 4G LTE speeds for connectivity and calls are up to scratch along with the earpiece and microphone quality. The haptics on the device are extremely good, and the intensity is customizable in the settings menu. As for the software experience, the device runs Realme UI 3.0, based on Android 12. Realme has incorporated a more spaced-out design theme to its interface with a colorful look to its icons. There are new always-on display customizations and ease of access using floating windows. For the more technologically challenged, there is also a simple mode that brings all the utility apps to the forefront and shuts off access to unnecessary apps. Realme Lab has been upgraded to include the above-mentioned heart rate sensor settings and also dual-mode audio which enables you to listen to the same song both from wired and wireless headphones simultaneously. I do like the intuitive aspects of the Realme UI, but again I wish that the company purges all traces of bloatware from the interface. The battery life of the Realme 9 Pro Plus is excellent, to say the least, even with the standard issue 4500mAh cell housed inside. In fact, the phone is so long-lasting that I've had to charge the device only 4 times in the week I have had with it. On PC Mark's battery 3.0 test the device got a score of 16 hours and 33 minutes, which is excellent, especially for a 4500mAh cell. To top it all off, literally and figuratively, there is the 60 watt charging that takes less than 30 minutes to completely juice up the battery. The Realme 9 Pro Plus is a great phone to use, and there are no two ways about it. Everything from the display to the fabulous cameras to the superb battery life is fine-tuned for the user's needs. However, nothing is truly perfect, and the 9 Pro Plus could use a more eye-catching design and perhaps a faster processor to truly be categorized as the best mid-ranger on the market. I will stand by my word though. The Realme 9 Pro Plus has the best cameras in the segment. Subscribe to the channel and leave your comments. Thank you for watching. See you soon.